Hey, greetings, friends. Jacques Howard here coming to you from Hub 13, 13 West Front Street, the historic downtown Trenton, New Jersey. Trenton 365 midweek. Um, for those of you who are seeing this for the first time, it's I'm sitting here with Brad Butler. I'm going to encourage you to make sure that you get a writing utensil and a piece of paper. Brad's got a lot of information to share about what he's doing, what he has been doing, et cetera. But for those of you who are interested in motivational speakers, authors, um, all around civically in engaged uh People who don't see geographic boundaries as a boundary to the work they're doing, um, that's Brad Butler. But before we get into that, again, we're coming to you from Hub 13, 13 West Front Street, historic downtown Trenton. This is an incubator or a resource center and an innovation center. We have some short term, short term, meaning less than two year leases available for spaces that are about 500 to 700 square feet. In addition to that, it's a 420 friendly building. We have an art gallery here and we also have three floors, approximately 7000 square feet of uh, interactive space. We are currently in what's considered the great room. And this space here can be configured um, to meet many needs. We've had job fairs, film screenings, celebrations of life, uh, celebrations uh, for um, baby showers, weddings, et cetera. We do have an art gallery here, the gallery at Hub 13. Currently on display is Lazy, as well as Roy Hames and Jay. Make sure that you come by and take a look at the artwork that we have here. Uh, we consider this space to be a space where artists can actually display their work, but in addition to displaying, we're going to assist them with building out the industry. All that ties into Jacques Reach, all the work I've been doing for over a decade, trying to develop civic engaged uh, residents and for them to hold the elected officials accountable for the work that they're supposed to be doing. And then for us collectively as humans, to find a better way um, to do things that have been plaguing us and troubling us in the past. With that being said, I get a chance to sit down with great human beings like Brad Butler here. And Brad and I go back many years. So for those of you who um, are able to do some research and look at some archives, you can see some of the interviews Brad and I have done in the past. So Brad, first of all, um, when we first met, Brad is always in black. Just so you know, he's always got something black on and he's logoed up, hat, Branding, intellectual property, so you can kind of get an idea where this is all going. So make sure that if you have questions about that, you can reach out to Brad as well and talk about the process of branding and why branding needs to be done in a particular way so that you can protect what you have. So with that being said, Brad Butler, um, I'd like for you to just kind of give that elevator pitch that you would, like if, if you're going to, if you meet somebody for the first time, and then I want to get into the meat and potatoes about what you've been up to. All right, cool. Uh, so my name is Brad Butler II. I'm an educational consultant. So I uh, travel the country speaking at schools, universities, and corporations, and my specialization is student success and retention. So uh, if you are in the, you know, of student success or retention or uh, motivation in general uh, for your students, your staff, uh, for your corporation, whatever it might be, um, then I'm the person that you want to give a, you know, a call to or just uh, send out inquiry. Um, Absolutely. And in addition to that, Brad, touch a little bit on um, what brought you to becoming a motivational speaker, an educational consultant, an author. Um, what were what were some of the processes like through your youth that got you to this point? Yeah, um, hardships, like a lot of failures, you know, a lot of, you know, doing it the, uh, the wrong way or, or not necessarily getting the help that I thought that I should be getting. Um, whether it be in the educational space, in the community, um, there, you know, even with starting my career in the very beginning, it was like, wow, I thought people would be more um, receptive to somebody doing something positive. Like, I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to hurt the community. I'm trying to uplift them. I'm trying to show them that, you know, uh, I was I was in the same position as some of these other students, some of these other people in general, but I was able to pull myself out of it. And unlike some other people who are out there who they tend to come in and they they give what I call general motivation mm -hmm. when you know you give the the kind of rah rah thing and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing in the sense because I'm a passionate speaker I'm a very very passionate and energetic speaker but I had to make sure that I was reverse engineering my success giving them steps to be successful because it's great if you motivate the the students or the individuals to be ready to run through a brick wall but what brick wall and why are you running through it in the first place? And, you know, like, what do you do after you have broken through the brick wall? Mm -hmm. You know, like, those are the things that they're not saying. Mm -hmm. So when I, and I was watching it for years, I was watching people doing it. And, and that's also part of the reason why I went back to school and got my master's in counseling. 
because I was watching speakers who were triggering the audience with what they thought was motivation because you're not giving them all the steps. You're not giving them all the skills. You're not helping them with um, uh, EQ, emotional intelligence. You're not helping them with SQ, social intelligence. You're not helping them with AQ, adverse, uh, adverse intelligence. You're not helping them with those areas. And the, the Q stands for quotient for anybody who's, you know, mm-hmm. like, but that doesn't, <laughs> I, I know, I know it's this quotient. That's why we always encourage you to get a writing test on a piece of paper and follow up with the guests so they can explain to you in detail what they're doing. And hopefully you can take the steps to hire them and pay them for their skill set. Yeah, well. Uh, and, <laughs> oh, money, man, we need it. I, I, we I do need it so. sometimes, Joe. Yeah. I would hope so. But yeah, that's what, what pretty much got me started, you know, moving in that direction. Because in the beginning, I'll be honest, I was that guy who just had so much passion and energy and I just wanted to help. And I was wrong. And I was getting it. I was getting it. I could get through to the kids. I could get through to the audience. But I realized later on, like, oh, Brad, shoot, you missed the step. You forgot to tell them that, you know, or you left this part out of the story. You got to tell them, it's like, oh, shoot. So I said, I wanted to make sure that I was doing things properly and giving them the correct information in the way that they can digest it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not going to be harmful because sometimes you bring in somebody who's supposed to be positive and we can actually be the, the audience worse off than we found it because of the person who was delivering the information in an incorrect manner. So that's why I spent tens of thousands, listen to me, tens of thousands of dollars on coaching and mentorship. I've worked with some of the best who are still my mentors right now. Dr. Eric Thomas, you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe yet, that's my mentor, right? That's my direct mentor, Jeremy Anderson, Inky Johnson, like these individuals who who guide me, take me under their wing and show me how to do it the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, I I want you to to just kind of, if we can go into this a little bit more, um, when you first got in, you were clear that you had raw, you had a talent, you had passion, you had a skill set. People liked you, you were being paid for doing this. But you said, I got to go a little bit deeper. I got to sharpen my, my skills. I have to be a bit better. Can you just talk about that process yeah. and, and, and explain that to younger people or to people in general who realize, hey, I've done step one and who have the mindset, okay, well, I've done what I'm supposed to do. Right. I never believed that I was good enough. Mm-hmm. Never. Like, even to this day, I always believe that there's areas that I can work on. Now, maybe I've gotten to the point where I have... Um, achieves the mastery of being an orator on mm-hmm. stage and delivering a keynote presentation or workshops or uh, professional development. I've, I've kind of gotten to some mastery in that sense, but I still feel like there's other areas of my life that I can still work on. And so that's the thing. You Once you, you, you get down that, that many things you're supposed to be doing that's helping you, you can't stop there. There's other areas surrounding that that you have to touch on, you have to work on that will um, give you that overall rating that you're wanting, that you're looking for. Where it's like in all aspects of my life, I am doing well. Mm-hmm. I'm doing what I need to be doing. So physically, mentally, spiritually, uh, financially, like your purpose, all these things. Like I, I'm very big on making sure that my wife is is at peace. I'm very uh, big on making sure my son has what he needs. Like I just had a situation yesterday where somebody, um, you know, my wife, she texts me. And she's very very um selective about what she will come to me with like brad i need i or i I really want or i need help with or whatever the case may be because she knows i'll drop everything i don't care what i got going on my wife says she needs me so but my son needs me so i gotta go so my wife sent me a text and mind you i she just went on vacation i just sent her on vacation um uh, for like a week with my mom and my sister and them to have a good time. Just, you know, she she loves food, so send her to New Orleans so she can go oh, eat and have a good time, right? She comes back and then she's like, oh man, she's like, um, you know, my best friend, she's, um, you know, going back to New Orleans, it's her birthday. She's like, I, you know, I think I really would like to go. I was like, so I didn't hear, go, go. I, I got I got our son, I'll take care of everything. I'll give him the daycare, I'll wash him, make, make sure he got everything he needs. I'll take, don't worry about nothing, you go. Take care, have fun, take pictures, you know, do your thing. Did that. She came back home very happy that she was able to go out and have a good time to do what we need to do. Um, but then I remember she she got a call, she or a text or something like that. And she was like, Oh yeah, I'm having uh, these bill collectors or whatever calling her about something old or whatever. And I was like, What? Okay. And she's like, ah, but I'll take care of it. I'm like, all right, whatever. You say you got it, I'll, I'll let you go. Then she texts me 
And we're like, oh, yeah, like I'm just frustrated because this, that, and the other, and I'm trying to get in contact with them. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're giving you the runaround. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, you're trying to work something out. And you, I'm trying to give you your money or yeah, whatever. Trying I'm trying to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you give me the runaround, and then what they do, they'll send you to collections. They'll do all this crazy stuff to you. So I was like, I don't like anybody telling, you know, me, my wife, and my son what we can and cannot do or what we can and cannot have. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, no problem give me the information send up the location all the information i will handle it from here she, are you short don't worry about it send it to me i got it she sent me the information i i was like i call no answer no problem i'll come to your building mm -hmm. drove to the building went in there hey um so we got this thing we need to get figured out because my wife needs to do something else whatever so um what, what do we need to do oh we well, gotta pay the pullback here mm -hmm. pay it it's done. It's done. Well. Done. Call my wife. Hey, all right. Everything's taken care of. You got your new things set up. Everything. You good to go now? She's oh my like I'm just like because I don't like you know for my wife to not be at peace. So in order for me to be at peace, my wife has to be at peace. My child has to be at peace, and everything else will flow. Mm -hmm. Like my 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 work will be just fine. My you know my my health will be just fine. If I take care of my household, if I take care of my my temple, take care of my my relationship with my you know, my God that I serve, so spot on, brother. That's it, and that's that's from the beginning. I mean, well, I think we set, we met in a cafe in Lawrence Township, yeah, Lawrence Shopping Center. Um, yep. it, it actually, was a New Orleans inspired cafe. I think if I, I remember, believe so. yeah, yeah. I and we and we chatted, and um, you know, you talked to me about your logo, about your branding, um, yeah. a lot of the initiatives that you had, um, your your story, etc. And um, that was many years ago. That was um, almost, I think, six. Oh, because Bont was, um, Bont was still a junior in high mm -hmm. school, and wow. and now Bont has clearly graduated and He's moved on. Some wonderful you know, things. Shout out to Bont Lee. Yeah, man, Bont, get in touch, man. We'd love to sit down with you again. Um, a couple of terms that came up uh, was passion and actions to go with it. Mm -hmm. um, can you just elaborate on that a bit more, and and how that is part of your brain? Yeah. Um, I don't want to do it if I don't love it. Mm. I don't like I'm that I'm that guy where there really isn't that like gray area for me. It's just like if I don't want to do it, I don't want, I'm not gonna do it. Mm. Like, my wife, my mom, like, even my son is like, and my son's only like a like year and a half. And he's like, if you don't want to do it, you're not doing it. Mm -hmm. Like he's like, yeah, they you, you get that from you, Brad. Because if you don't want to, if you don't want to do something, you're not gonna do it. Now. Are there things that I don't want to do, but I do them? Absolutely. Because there's certain things in this world that's just like, you have to do this. You got you to gotta take care. I don't necessarily want to pay bills, but I'm glad that I'm in a position where I can pay them. Yes, sir. So I will pay them. You know, glad with a smile on my face. Um, so I really look at it as whatever I do, I'm going to try to do it to the best of my abilities. Like that's biblical. Whatever my hand should touch, mm -hmm. I try to do it to the best of my ability. And uh you know that's the the whole passion part about it so i try to you know even when i'm just working doing like if i was doing like manual labor i tried to do it to the best of my ability or at least with a positive attitude like mm -hmm. i get to do this this is not a means to an end this is a connection this is a bridge to something else so as long as i would have that in my mind i wouldn't get stuck mm -hmm. in with certain things so i, I kind of trick myself into getting through mundane things and stuff like that um so the first thing you said was the passion but then you said the work so it's one thing to be passionate about something, but when the work kicks in and you realize how much work it takes to attain the thing that you want, that's where a lot of people fail and they mm -hmm. falter because they're like, oh, I didn't know it was going to be this hard. Like, I'm also a coach. Like, I coach people in this field. Like, um, but we're in Trenton. So um, over at the Skillet, oh, yeah. uh, every other every other month, we do a meetup with the Nestle Speakers Academy, which is uh, overseen, were overseen by my mentors, uh, Jeremy Anderson, Dr. Uh, Eric Thomas. Um you know, Inky Johnson, those are the individuals who, who run it. And I've been you know, tasked as the chapter head uh, or the president to run the chapter for New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, <laughs> Pennsylvania, right? Well it just all kind of well came done. together. Yeah, it all kind of came together. It's just like, y'all all can just kind of come to me. And um, <laughs> like, when, even when I'm talking to them and they see where I'm at and I've been doing this for over 10 years, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, it looks so easy. I can do that. Or, oh, I can do that. I'm like, no, absolutely. You can do it but you can't do it right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some time and there's going to be some bumps in the road. You're going to experience some things that are going to make, all right, I tell people all the time, if you have not cried, cussed, or wanted to quit, you ain't been doing this long enough. Yeah. That's it. And I've been in, and I've been <laughs> in all those spaces where, you know, you believe that, you know, I've been doing the groundwork. I, I paid my dues. I've done enough pro bono work. Like I have the video and I have the testimonials and I have, 
the proof that I'm capable of doing this, but you still don't believe me? No problem. I'm not going to, in the words of my mentor, Dr. Eric Thomas, I'm not going to go where I am tolerating. I'm going to go where I'm celebrating. So that's where I go. I go where I'm celebrating. Spot on, man. I'm glad you 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 brought up Dr. Eric Thomas multiple times mm -hmm. in this um, because I've um, always encouraged folks to have a team, mm -hmm. to have a team of individuals that are going to be honest with you. Yeah that are going to hear what you have to say, but are also going to give it to you honestly. Um, many years ago, and I was told that everyone needs a Peter, a Paul, and a Timothy in their life. Mm -hmm. Now, besides the gender reference, what it means is that you need someone who is mentoring you, someone you are mentoring, and someone who's going through the same things with you. Right. And, um, and it sounds like you've got some very high level folks um, who you have a strong relationship with, um, you have a strong foundation with your family, yeah. which is also good, and, and your faith as well. Um, can you just drill down a bit more on how people getting into a better space in life need to start recognizing that there are some basic foundational things that we can do that are going to set us up for successes, such as having um, our own personal belief within ourselves that we rely upon, family and team around us. I would say you have to create some separation. You got to create separation from that which you know, or I should say the devil that you know, mm -hmm. right? Because you're not going to get where you're trying to get to doing the same things over and over again, being around the same people over and over again. That's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. That is what we do because we're so comfortable that we're so comfortable in uh, in our sin, we're so comfortable in our environment, we're so comfortable in the people that we have around us. It's not until you expose yourself to different people, different conversations, different cities, different states, uh, different ways of travel, right, that you start realizing the world is much bigger than this town or city that I live in, and the world is much bigger than these conversations that I've been having that are minuscule. They're, they're not taking me anywhere, they're not helping me with anything. So, I don't, I, I had to separate myself from certain people and certain things because I wanted them. Like the things that I was seeing that I wanted, I had to get around it. And if it meant that I had to pay money, then okay, I have to pay money to do it. If I had to travel on my own, then I'll, I'll try. Like, all right, I didn't get on a, a plane until I think I was like 29 or 30 years old. Like my mom told me I was on a plane when I was a little kid, like an infant. But of course, I don't remember that. And uh, I hadn't been on a plane since. And my sister would ask me every year, come on, let's go to Jamaica. Come on, let's go here. Let's go there. I'll pay for your flight. I'll pay for it. My, my sister was always trying to get me uh, to go on vacations. And I was always saying, no, I don't want to go because I got to work. And it really wasn't that I had to work. It was because I had a fear of heights. I had a fear of planes. Okay. I didn't. I just didn't have the experience. I didn't know. And I was offered the opportunity to come out to Atlanta to speak. And I was like, I, I can't turn it down. Like, I, I got to I gotta go. Like, and I was talking to my wife about it. She's like, okay, babe, like, well, let's get on the plane. Let's go. And I was like, well, I've never been on a plane. And she's like, well, I get on planes and I'm all right. And she's like, and I'm not necessarily, you know, a fan of it, but you can do it. And I was like, okay. And my wife with me, with, with, with me, with, with me the first time, you know, with me being on a, a plane that I could actually remember. And, you know, everything went well. You know, we went, it was fine. You know, we made it through it. And now I'm actually better with being on planes and navigating through terminals than my wife is because I travel more than she does. Mm. Because of like, once I got on one plane and had one flight, that was it. I was like, yep, I'm coming. I'm coming to California. I'm coming to Arizona. I'm coming to back to Atlanta. I'm going there. I'm, I'm flying all over. I'm Florida, whatever you, I'm, wherever the opportunities are, you know, and you're just, let's go. I was like, I got no problem I'm going to Mexico. I spoke in Mexico. It's just like I was going now. I'm, like, I'm going all over the place because it's, it was the proximity. It was the exposure to a different thing. Once I was exposed to it, I was like, and plus another thing, I can't stand being afraid of things. That bothers me to my core. So um, I had this thing where I think it was like the third or fourth time that I got on the plane. I felt like I was still kind of afraid of it, like that those butterflies in my stomach. So I forced myself to open the window, sit at the window seat, open the window, watch us take off watch us land when we experience turbulence look out the window and see what it is look up what is turbulence 
and you find that turbulence has never caused a plane to crash. Mm -hmm. It might make the flight a bit uncomfortable, but it's never caused a plane to crash. And it's crazy because I thought of an analogy when I was, uh, or, or uh, a kind of a quote when I was uh, going through that moment as I was you know, getting on the plane and I'm walking over to, you know, my, my, um, my economy seat because at the time I was like, no first class or whatever. Um, and I'm walking past first class and sometimes you get that thing that, you know, you, that voice in the back of your head like, why? At first class, like how can they get to be in first class? What's so what's so different about them? What's so special about them that they get to be in first class and I'm not, or whatever? And then I remember sitting down and I experienced turbulence. I mean, it just happened to be some I mean, this bad turbulence where people like, oh, you know, get one of those ones, and it flipped, and I was like, wow. It doesn't matter if you're economy or first class, you both you all are going to experience turbulence. And you all are going to get to your destination at the same time. Or not. Or not. <laughs> or not. Now, we're going to wait on the side. We're going to say we're going to get there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but yeah, man, that, that was the thing. Was like, it's shifting your perspective. And um, with that whole perspective thing, I've, I've said it in my presentation before, it comes to three steps with perspective. Like your perspective, is that, and that's the end. Like when you get to that point where your perspective is off, there were two steps that came before that, before you got to that point. So it's in three steps. So your your perspective is off because you have false expectations. Mm -hmm. You have false expectations because you're human living amongst humans who are having a human experience. And somewhere along the line, you forgot that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that has helped me immensely with my relationships. Uh, you know, my mom, my dad, my wife, like people around me in business, just everything has helped me to view the world differently. So I'm not looking at you know, situations like this is always be the mentality like somebody owes me something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nobody owes me anything. Like when I'm talking to these uh principals and uh superintendents and I have meetings and stuff and they five minutes late or whatever, they 10 minutes late, it's yo, because 1% of their job is to book me. 1% of their job is to book me. The majority of their job is to take care of these kids, take care of the school, take care of the staff members. So I can wait an extra five minutes. I can wait an extra 10 minutes so that they can get on the call and not have an attitude and still meet them with a, uh, you know, an attitude of gratitude and a smile on my face where everybody else is frowning at them and they're pissed off at them for what they did uh, or they're being blamed for. They probably had nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, that is the way that I look at the world. And that's the way I look at people. Mm -hmm. Super powerful. Um, going forward, um, we're ending up the year. 2023 yeah. is coming to a close, calendar-wise. Um, 2024 is opening. And we just, as humans, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. In the year, we go into another year. Um, I know that a lot of work that you're doing and have been doing is not going to change because of the calendar. It's just going to evolve yes, in so some much. capacity. So um, going into closing out 2023 and going into 2024, can you give us a little bit of peek into what is going on in Brad Butler 2 mm -hmm. and what are some of the expectations for 24 and how can more people get on board with what you're doing book you to come speak yeah. book you to come teach a coaching class or something like that yeah so uh, most of you don't know that this year was not necessarily up to my expectations mm -hmm. like it, it like I have goals in, for myself every year things that I want to do um, I want to accomplish every year uh, I'm and I am my hardest critic. So my wife would, would say that no, we fine, you know, you did good. Uh, my mom would say, hey, you did great. And my mentors would say, yo, listen, you're good. You're in good space. I already know that I was I'm pissed off for greatness. Mm -hmm. I'm pissed off for greatness. Like it don't take much to to trigger me and make me feel like ah, no, Brad, not going hard enough. It's time to get it together. It's time to put some stuff together. And so, so I fully expect next year to be my best year ever I my best year ever I get better every year um I learn more um I I I gain more relationships and my network gets thicker and thicker and um I'm trusted more by my mentors and things like that so I just I fully expect next year to be my best year ever and I just got I'm just pissed off for greatness <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome like, if it, maybe do you have one of your, your some of your merch do you have it on, on, on I should your put it on something yeah I think so I man. should put it on something but um, yeah I mean I have a few slogans and sayings you know like this is one of them hope is your superpower which is like my theme that I use when I'm doing the, my presentations I got one that everybody loves this other one that I have it's called uh, IEP couldn't stop me so oh. I, <laughs> nice yeah yeah because that's a big thing within my story is that you know I spent 10 years in special ed classes 
And then, you know, I, I now have my master's degree and I'm actually working on uh, possibly getting my uh, my doctorate. So I already applied to uh, to the school, so we're going to see how that goes. Well, I want to publicly um, say I'm proud of you. Thank I you. appreciate you. Um, we've taken steps to to spend time with each other over the years. And uh, it's nice nice to see you develop it and have the goals that you have set, hear them, and then see them achieve and know that you've got bigger stuff planned. Oh, absolutely. Man, absolutely. I, I look forward to uh, spending more time with you and talking a bit more and, and exposing my networks to you. All right, bro? I hope so. I hope so. Oh, sure. Well, sure. Let me know where to find me. Yeah, and that's where you put your time. I'm going to go ahead and get it. All right. <laughs> so uh, the best place for you to find me, like literally, if, if you go on Google and type in Brad Butler for a second, right? I, I'm not hard to find it. I tell people all the time, if you can't find me, you ain't trying. Yeah, so you ain't looking. You ain't, you ain't looking. So it's Brad Butler II uh, on all pretty much my social media uh, platforms. Uh, Instagram is pretty much the same, Brad Butler, the 2ND. So it's like Brad Butler, the T-H-B, the number 2ND, right? Uh, and the website, if you wanted to, to book me, is www.bradbutler2.com. And Butler spelled with one T. All right, I don't know how people be getting that mixed up like the two t's that's the thing we sit on yeah, <laughs> yeah. not the other <laughs> awesome and he's got a great sense of humor as you can see in closing folks this is really simple um trent 365 the midweek all the things that i'm a part of is really about building a better community for everyone so with that being said take the initiative um take the steps reach out to the folks who i'm bringing to you and uh tell them where you heard it remember it's always about justice peace and humility